Warning, the following podcast contains violent scenes that may be unsettling to some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. The icy waters of the North Atlantic hold many secrets. One such secret is about to be discovered. Despite the concerns and worries of life, a group of friends makes a final voyage on the luxurious yacht Delilah, taking the vessel from America to its new owner in England. What promises to be a pleasurable journey across the ocean waves descends into a desperate struggle for survival. Join Mac, played by Tillman, Danny, played by Slavek, Matthew, played by Adam, and Craig as the keeper of the arcane lore as they investigate the derelict. The Skull of Cthulhu scenario is published by Chaosium and available on Lulu. Follow us on Twitter or Facebook at Twin Cities by Night to always stay up to date. There you can also find our Discord channel invite link. We'd love to see you. If you wish to support us financially, you can also find us on Patreon at Twin Cities by Night. Welcome everyone to our channel. Today we're going to be playing The Derelict, which is a Call of Cthulhu 7th edition scenario written by Sandy Peterson with Mike Mason. The three of you are about to embark on a transatlantic vacation aboard Max Yacht. You'll be uh, taking the boat Delilah, which is about a 100-foot luxury yacht that is owned by Mac from Boston to um, the new owners in Liverpool and this is sort of like the last hurrah because Mac is actually selling the yacht and this is um, the best chance that you have to take advantage of it and have one last vacation on this. Um, a few of you guys um, know each other already. You've probably met um, in passing at least through like friends of friends, but um, if each of you wants to quickly give an introduction on your character, um, let's we'll start with uh, Mac. Right, I'm playing Mac or his full name is... Charles McQuinn. Uh, he's 32 years old and a writer, or well, at this point, a once upon a time, he was a writer. Um, he had one major success story or series. And after that, well, his creativity dropped out and he's been struggling to, uh, to get back on the writing train, so to say. And now he has to, unfortunately, get rid of his prized Yark Delilah that he dearly loves um, because a very good friend of his got him into this uh, sailing hobby. So it means a lot to him. All right. And next um, we have Slavic playing Danny. So I'm playing Danny, or as he's known with his full name, Daniel von Hollisander, whose father was a detective who tried to sort of uncover the corruption in the Providence PD. But uh, he was framed for regulations infringement and was stuck uh, being a beat cop until his death. And both his parents, his mother and father, later died of mysterious causes. Her husband died in a car wreck and his mother died of mysterious causes a year after and he grew up with his uncle who was a lawyer. Danny went to go in his father's footsteps and he became a detective but he realized because he went to also root out corruption but he realized that that might not be the ideal way so later he went on and became a lawyer and you know in his job as a lawyer Mac is one of his clients and he got invited onto his yacht. All right and finally we have Adam who is playing Matthew. Uh, I'll be playing Matthew. Uh, I am a I'm a football uh, slash soccer player. Um, I went to Boston College, and I was very successful uh, with my athletic career there. Uh, my family's originally from Ireland. Uh, we moved to America when I was very young. We were uprooted for a mysterious reason, and I'm not really sure why. And that's something that now in life I'm trying to find out more about. Hopefully, you know, going to Liverpool and, and meeting this this contact who can maybe tell me some more. Mac is an important guy in my life. He basically saved me from my downward spiral where I was addicted to drugs. I was using a lot of performance enhancing drugs. I basically had the the life of an athlete on top, a, a ladies man. Uh, women basically just threw themselves at me, but I found myself in this kind of downward spiral, and that's where Mac really really saved my life. So I'm really happy to be uh, on this, on this uh, one last ride with him. 
All right. So the three of you are in Boston. Um, you decided to have a quick early lunch before embarking on the Delilah. It's about 10 in the afternoon. It's October 2018. And you decided to go to somewhere close to the pier uh, in order to kind of regroup and make sure everything's all ready before you make your way out um, to the harbor. So the three of you are joined at the table by uh, one young uh, Ashley Bethel, which was an old flame of uh, Max, but uh, the four of you are now sitting at the table, just you know, having a few beers before the boat's getting ready. So, uh, scenes on you. So, are you excited? I tell you what, Mac, I can't wait to get out there. Ooh, looks like a great day to to get out on those waters. Yeah, we really we have to make the most of this this last journey. I'm really gonna miss that lady. Can't you just keep her? Ah, oh, dude, we talked about this. I'm really hard pressed for the money right now, and this this guy's offering. So yeah, I'm really gonna miss that hot tub for sure, Mac. Says Ashley. <laughs> I'm gonna miss that too. Oh well, we can still get a a hot tub in the backyard, I think. But the yard, it's gotta it's gotta go. I'm gonna put my arm around Mac's shoulder, and I'm gonna give him like a a really bro shake, and I'm gonna say, you know what, Mac? It's our last time on the boat. We're gonna party it up, and I'm gonna. I'm just going to down my drink in one sip. Yeah, Matthew, uh, I was going to mention to you, um, do you think I can uh, press you for some uh, details? I'm considering writing a biography uh, since I'm I'm not getting back on this fantasy literature train. I I don't know. It's it's not working out for me. Every time I start something up, it it just doesn't turn out. But maybe, uh, you know, you and I, we've known each other for a long time. I think that could... That could be uh, a success story right there. You really think I'd be a good subject for a book? Yeah, sure. People loved you. Yeah, I mean, they really did, didn't they? And you have a really strong story, I think. I mean, uh, we need to find someone to do like the, the cover art and maybe um, collect some photos and arrange them nicely. I mean, a biography that's very different to what I've been doing in the past, but we can figure something out. Yeah, I, I really, I really like this idea. I definitely think this is something we should pursue. Nice. Well, nice. that'd be very nice because I hate to lose you as a client, Mac. I, you know, we're good friends, but I don't do pro bono like that. <laughs> the three of you um, sitting at the table, could you all make me a spot hidden roll? Yeah, I have a hard success. So, um, Mac, you're, you're probably a little lost in your thoughts, but um, Danny and Matthew, you notice that uh, you're kind of being watched by this uh, tall, dark, mysterious stranger who's kind of uh, leaning up against the bar, just watching the conversation the four of you are having. He's wearing like a high collar uh, white shirt with a sport coat over it. And since you got a hard success uh, Slavic, you kind of notice a small bulge underneath uh, his left breast pocket. Hey, Mac, friend of yours? Who? You point him out. Pack and heat. You point him out, and you um, recognize one of your other friends, uh, Dennis McCrane, um, another one of the people you invited along on this little boat journey. Did I hear anything from him? Like I invited Uh, people, but he's standing in the back. It seems. Um, you invited him, uh, but. He's always kind of like a hit or miss whether he's going to show up. Um, if When he does show up, it's usually like a mass, last minute thing. And you don't notice a small bag at his feet. Right. So I walk over and hold out my hand like, hey, Dennis, last minute as always, right? Yeah. He finishes the, the drink. Um, he had um, one gulp, um, sets it down on the bar, takes your hand. Yeah, Mac, well, you know, something came up and then the thing got put down. So uh, I guess I am free. Yeah, hope you don't ha- mind uh, me tagging along. No, not at all. I mean, I invited you. Sure. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I, I already um, stowed some luggage on the boat already, so I spoke to the captain, the mate, and they seem ready to go whenever you are. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Who are your friends? Uh, yeah, come over, and I like uh, introduce him to everyone. Hey, this is Dennis McCrane. Yeah, we, we go way back, and as does everyone here. Like, uh, I'm Danny. Pleased to meet you. I'm Ashley, Ashley says to Dennis, takes her hand and says, charmed. How are you, Dennis? I'm Matt. I feel like I might have seen you around before. Yeah, you, you do look familiar and he kind of gives you a little wink. All right, um, are you guys done here? Hell yeah, let's get this show on the road. 
I finish another drink and I uh, get ready to board the uh, the ship. And this actually um, comes over to t- um, the table, and before you can move Mac, he kind of grabs the bill and slides a couple of crisp bills into it and says, I got this, and brings it over the bar before you can you have a chance to say anything. Pretty? Uh, okay. Matthew, you, you got to watch out with your drinking. <laughs> Gonna get seasick. I know. This is, uh, this is my last one, or close to my last one. Only a few more tonight. I told you we were going to party. Yeah, I don't want you partying over the toilet the whole day. <laughs> well, luckily, Mac, you're always such a, such a worrier. Why don't you just live a little bit? Well, luckily, the Delilah has abundance of toilets on her. Ashley, I have no idea why you even know that. Oh, you've been there. There's a bunch of rooms on it. And the three of you know that having been on the boat before, usually not for... Um, excursions this long that there are quite a few staterooms on the boat it has like a main living quarters underneath the main deck and on top they have even have a sun deck which is which kind of doubles as like the pilot house for the captain and the mate but uh yeah there's quite a few uh staterooms on this yeah i do think we have five toilets except when one of them was broken but i think that was that was fixed i I gave it the once over before i decided to to go ahead and sell it so you Finish up your drinks and you grab your various bags and sundries. Probably had them checked at the coat check downstairs. The plan was for you guys to go off um, and kind of take your time with this uh, little cruise. Normally, a ship uh, going like 20 knots an hour can make it in like a week or so. But while well, all of you are in real no hurry to get back to the real world and figure a nice little extended vacation, if it goes like to 10 days even, that's still plenty of time to make it back. I mean... Part of the joys of this is that you have like pretty much one last uh, hurrah at this. So you all kind of decide to make it worth it. So take a quick Uber over to the, the harbor in Boston. It's a tight fit, but because um, the only ones you can get at this time of day are those, uh, th- just the sedans. You couldn't find a, a large one, but thankfully it's not too far from where you are. And you notice this beautiful 100-foot uh, yacht harbored in the water and you see two men in white uniforms walking across the deck mac you know one of them kind of like a a short uh, european guy named jacob greenberg is the captain and you could see the mate talking into the radio on the on the top deck Um, his name is uh, kumar patel they've been with the delilah since you got her man she's a beaut yeah still is i waved the two of them Hello? Okay, probably can't hear me. I imagine the port area is quite loud. Yeah, you don't get the the attention of Kumar, but uh, Captain Greenberg gives you a little wave, and then he continues to go about uh, the work he was doing. All right, let's let's board up, right? Everyone got everything? Toothbrush, toothpaste, you know? Yes, Mom. We're on the water. Ashley, let me carry that for you. Oh, uh, uh, thank you, um, Matthew. I appreciate it. Um, She hands you... uh, one of those little rolly suitcases and she still has like a a purse and another like day bag slung over her shoulder. I try to carry her stuff with ease, clearly just showing my, my strength and and yes, you you probably feel like you could handle the grab, um, the over the shoulder bag too. If you, as well as your own gear, if you really want to show off. Well, it is max girl. So I'm, I'm not trying to, to steal her. I'm just trying to impress her. You do know that it's Max's ex, but... Yeah. <laughs> well, if I do know my buddy, uh, he probably, you know, would like to rekindle that old flame. Mac, you're seeing uh, uh, your buddy Matthew kind of like being very chivalrous to your ex. How does that make you feel? Honestly, I think I expected as much of him. Like, I'm not surprised because it's Matthew. Uh, still, maybe it's a little weird, but I think that that Ashley thing that is long ago, times past. All right. He's um, going to make sure to, to place the woman in the large bedroom by herself and everyone else in all the other bedrooms. Yeah. Well, luckily, uh, pretty much every um, bedroom looking at the the plans is accessible by its own staircase. And while there are connecting doors, most of the time you could just leave them shut. So, and with the abundance of toilets on this boat, there's um, very little need for your privacy to be disturbed. You see Dennis kind of just shoulder his bag and kind of like uh, just walk on board. He c- gives a quick nod to the captain and then kind of goes into the bowels of the ship, probably to claim a stateroom for himself. 
All right, says Captain Greenberg. Uh, we're ready to go. Anything else you need, uh, uh, sir, before we cast off? I don't think so. I've got everything I need right here. These are all the people that showed up, and I think we're good to go. All right, uh, Mr. Patel, if you will. Aye, aye, sir, the Indian man says, and he undoes the rope and pushes off. Well, Captain Greenberg starts up the engine and takes you off into the Atlantic Ocean. Now, the group of you have several days to kind of enjoy your time on the ship. So is there anything that you want to do uh, right away? Let's start with uh, Matthew. Uh, well, Matthew would be really excited about doing some diving. It's something he's very good at, and he brought his gear with him. So as soon as that was an option, uh, it's something he's been looking forward to. And uh, Danny, anything you've been looking forward to do on the boat? Oh, yes. Time to smoke those Cuban cigars. And Mac? I think Mac is going to join Matthew on the diving aspect. I'm pretty sure he would have a like the diving capabilities. <laughs> I don't find it on my sheet, but I think it makes sense, uh, judging by his backstory. Yeah. Uh, well, you have swim at 50% so and survival C, so you're more than well capable of using diving equipment especially with an experienced diver with you. You left uh, the harbor before noon, probably like 11 o'clock, and you started making your way east, kind of uh, coasting along. Uh, you make some pretty good time, and you're heading out uh, up the eastern coast of Canada um, on the first day um, with um, plans to kind of get, get at least to like the Labrador Islands before um, turning in for the night. Did you want to go diving during the daytime or are you trying to do a night dive? Is there anywhere specifically that you'd want to maybe do this dive? I think there are regions along the uh, the East Canadian coast uh, where you can find whales if you're lucky because they go there to um, mate, but it depends on the time of year. But uh, I think that would be like a good area. I don't really know much about it, but that would be something that we are targeting i think okay is there uh danny was diving something uh you were interested in not particularly but you know i'm just gonna sit there reading a book waiting for them yeah let's just uh, make some prefunctory uh dive rolls mac and matthew for your time in the water so if you could um, roll me either survival sea or swim or if you have diving as a skill Oh, no, I drown. I have 93. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, that's not a botch, but um, you realize that the area that uh, you chose is probably a little bit too cold for any long-term diving. And it looks like, uh, Matthew, you don't uh, fare too much better. So you do um, get a little bit of diving in, but it's just like really murky. And like you're always, you're fumbling with your mask and like there's like a small little air pocket in your in the hose and it's like, just something you need to do more maintenance on before tempting again. Uh, Matthew, you're probably uh, more disappointed because diving is like one of your things and just not being able to find a good spot and uh, make a good time from, for your friend and yourself. It's just probably something like a little bit of a letdown, you know? Yeah, I'm probably kind of throwing a little bit of a temper tantrum, throwing my gear around and just basically being a bad sport about the, about the whole situation. After a while, uh, you see Captain Greenberg come up um, to the sun deck where a few of you have gathered and says, well, we're making pretty good time. And with your permission, sir, uh, I think Kumar wants to get some of the steaks going. Right. Uh, right. Yes, that sounds good. Yeah. So how do you guys want them cooked? Rare. Rare, of course. Uh, I prefer English, actually. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ashley and Dennis also order medium rare and then dennis speaks up and says and a another medium rare um for yeah all right um the three of you can make a psychology roll i fail did anyone pass I also fail slavic did you pass that's a hard note all right well the three of you really uh don't see anything out of the ordinary matthew on the other hand uh you think that dennis must be really really hungry in order to order two steaks i probably wouldn't mention anything because I'm a little bit, I, I don't know if intimidated is the right word by Dennis, but I, I've seen him around and I feel like he kind of is a thug and I'm not going to question him at all. I respect a man's want for two steaks. 
<laughs> I don't think Mac pays any attention. Yeah. Now, now with those rolls, Kamar lights up the grill and the five of you enjoy a really nice steak dinner and some surf and turf, then go, go down to relaxing. You see um, at some point... Dennis excuses himself, um, carrying another steak down below. But other than that, um, it's a pretty uneventful night. Unless you guys have anything else you want to do. Fishing. Why do you think I brought all this gear with me? Waited for those two clowns to get out of the water. Anyone <laughs> with me? Uh, we can Absolutely. shoot the shit. So let's say that um, this is the second day that um, you are doing some deep sea fishing. You get your rod set up. It seems that uh, Kumar is actually uh, quite the able seaman in more than ways than one. So uh, um, he's helping you set some lines as well. If you want to kind of roll, would this be, I guess, survival? Oh, damn. Uh, nice. I, I succeed by a large margin. Yes, damn. you did. Danny, Matthew, you're having um, a pretty slow day. You, you catch a, a few small ones, which, I mean... Kumar's like, oh, we might as well um, cook him up. But uh, Mac, you're kind of reeling in this something really, really big. Can I get you, uh, get you to make a strength roll? It's really fighting you. You can do it, Mac. I'm smoking the cigar there oh, watching no. it. So uh, you're, you're uh, pulling back on what seems to be the uh, trophy fish of a lifetime. Everyone's really excited. And all of a sudden, snap, there goes your line. And like everyone's like face is just like, go. Oh, yeah, probably like almost face plan because suddenly all the the pressure is gone. Yeah. Tension, I mean. Yeah. Kumar comes up and um, uh, says, well, at least we got these other ones. I mean. Oh, dude. Like that would have been the coolest picture ever. Yeah. Last ride on the Delilah. We'll catch That's another one. Thing. I'm sure. Uh, Ashley comes up. Guy there into yeah. the water. Ashley comes up to you, Mac, and says, well, maybe when you write the story of something, you, you could have actually caught it, and smiles a bit. I roll my eyes at that. <laughs> yeah, she punches your arm and then kind of uh, goes, goes back um, over and says, uh, all right, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get changed and get into the hot tub if anyone wants to. Then she starts uh, heading down one of the stairways. Well, what do you guys think? Are we done fishing or what? And Mac's going to be uh, taking a, a can out of a out of a six-pack and opening it. Oh, pass one out on, yeah? And I, you know, very happily will start passing them over to anybody who's willing to accept it. Come on, yeah, Mac. Yeah. It's, just a, it's just a beer. And just a fish. Oh. All right, all right, yeah. Plenty of them in the sea. <laughs> I, I sort of, you know, wink at him as I look at Ashley. <laughs> Yeah, you, you catch a nice view as she um, descends the little Jacob's Ladder staircase on the top deck down. So unless you have anything else to do, the day passes pretty uneventfully. Uneventfully? I think we play the most revealing round of Fuck, Mary Kill ever. Of what? <laughs> they don't know. You say three names and you have to arrange them by who you would have sex with, who you would marry, <laughs> and who you would kill. <laughs> oh. And I think we have a grand old time drunk in the hot tub. Yeah. The next day comes around and you're you're pretty you've rounded the coast of Greenland um, sometime during the night and you see the when you're up on the sun deck um, it's probably early morning um, at, by this time Captain Greenberg um, comes up to you and says yeah we're almost to the thing give me a short moment uh, Matthew will urinate off of the boat <laughs> despite the many toilets of course. Right, so um, we're approaching an area where my mother told me is a lost reefer ship, a refrigerated freighter. Yeah. Uh, salvage rights could pass to me. Um, um, this seems like an opportunity to get some money. So that's why I wanted to check it out. Yeah, I mean, I saw it on the horizon. It's pretty... Uh, he, he had you some binoculars and you see this small little speck out on the map where you were expecting to find something. And sure enough, it's like mostly all white with this little black speck on it. And Captain Greenbird says, so I'm thinking a couple hours we'll stumble upon it. All right. All right. Good. Just make sure the others are um, ready to play their parts. Sure. I inform them. All right. So does any of you have any other activities that you'd like to engage in on this third day? I think I have some poker cards. So maybe play some poker. Sure. Uh, Dennis will actually join you for that if you're offering up. Yeah. Mac, Matthew, poker, Ashley. Sure. I'm in. Well, what, yeah, are we, why not? what are we staking? 
Ashley asks. Hmm. Well, poker's not fun without any stakes. Ah. Uh, well, I suppose we could stake the things, ante up the things we brought with us, huh? On the ship. All right. Says Ashley. Yeah, uh, I'm game, says Dennis. The only thing I can offer is embarrassing stories. Fair enough. Embarrassing stories is good, though. Let's do that. Minor story, major story, and these are... I'll take this to my grave stories, huh? That sounds good to me, says Ashley. Cool. I guess we'll play it for rounds then. Yeah, sure. Just for this, could could I get luck rolls from everyone? All right. Do the actual luck. Oh, yeah, I succeed then. Okay, in that case, I fail. I also fail. Well... Dennis um, impaled his, so he takes the first round. Um, so those of you who failed, you each owe an embarrassing story. Well, I certainly don't want to have to go first. Is it really going to be me, you guys? Come on, you lost. Sad of already. All right, Mac, I'm sure you remember the, the girl I was with that, that one time four or five years ago. Well, I had been seeing her when she had a boyfriend, and... Sure enough, this, this guy came home one night, and I had to jump out of the window. I ended up running down the street naked until I made it back to my, to my dorm. Why am I not surprised? So embarrassing. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. More booze? Line me up, and then I, I like, throw back a, a shot or, or whatever is, is served. All right, my turn, and I'm dragging someone in the mud at this table. Ashley, the hot tub, and I, we go way back. And oh, God. Ashley turns beet red at that. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Hey, man, I, I, did, I didn't lose. I lost for you. <laughs> yeah. You're a cruel, cruel man, Mac. Cruel, can, cruel man. Can you make me a charm roll, please? See how this plays over. I pass. Wow. So, hey, you rolled a five. Yeah, Ashley actually kind of starts, stops looking embarrassed for a moment, and you see her kind of like turn her head uh, slightly to the right, look up and smile. As you're dealing around uh, the start to your next one, you hear a horn blast from the Delilah. <laughs> all hands, all hands on deck. You hear the voice of Captain Greenberg shout. You heard the man. Let's go. So you make your way up from the lounge up into the sun deck, which uh, shares a floor with the pilot house. And you could see that off in the distance, um, not many miles away, is what appears to be a big white iceberg and on that iceberg is actually resting a pretty sizable cargo ship. It looks to be like at least 110 meters long and it looks like it's run aground, but otherwise undamaged from this side. Nice ship. Do you think they're in trouble? Says uh, Ashley. Uh, I think it's abandoned. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's abandoned. I was hoping we could make a stop here. You knew about this? Yes. My mother found out about it and told me this is a a freighter ship i don't think these usually have uh, many workers on them and i'm pretty sure they have left it already and it's been sitting here for a while and i don't think anyone ever came here so i wanted to check it out captain greenberg um steps up and says well we are required by law to check it out if there are any survivors they're probably no more than like a dozen or so but you know well yeah if there are any we we turn back and bring him to the shore. But from what I heard, uh, it's been like that for a little bit. This is one hell of a dive, Mac. I can't believe you kept this a surprise the whole time. I wasn't sure uh, how to bring it up. Well, you could have given that away as a secret, says Ashley. <laughs> can't say I'm exactly. It's, it's not an embarrassing story, really. It I might know. turn into one. Well, uh, you always did know how to show a girl a good time. Mac is having like thoughts about her right now and is uh, rolling dice in his head to find out who she's actually trying to be flirty with and whether it's really him. Captain Greenbird decides to um, take the Delilah about and kind of circle the iceberg at a little bit of a distance and uh, you guys get a pretty good view of it as you float on by. It said it's, uh, at least, it's at least 115 meters long and a pretty decent uh, um, height probably probably at least um, 21 meters high. So it's a pretty decent ship, but not overly large. You notice um, that the lifeboat on the port side is already cast off, but the the starboard side lifeboat is still kind of hung up by the superstructure. 
as you make your way around um, the far side of the iceberg, you do notice that a small um, hole has been breached into the mid deck on the aft end of it on the port side. So, and you do see a small amount of uh, snow that has kind of gone in there. Uh, looks like you could probably crawl in there if you wanted to. Otherwise, there is a gangway on the rear um, rear stern side. Uh, on the stern starboard side, wow, but uh, it's pretty firmly snug up against the side of the iceberg there. See that? That, uh, that ship isn't moving, so that's why I think it's still here. Now, I really would like to find out how we can how we can get in. Can you use the I have no idea. Not a ship person. Well, we could do the pirate thing and like try to throw a ladder on top of it. Captain Greenberg, do you have any suggestions? Uh, well, we have plenty of rope down, down below deck and a few grappling hooks if that's really what you want to do. But uh, we have the Delilah's dinghy, of course, which might be make it easier to bring it up on shore. Um, I could bring in the Delilah closer, but I don't want to risk you know, wrecking her as well. Oh, no, definitely not that. You think it's safe to go with the dinghy? Well, we could do that or try to anchor somewhere close, but it's your boat, sir. No, I think the dinghy is probably our best bet. We take the rope with us, with us and, and we'll see. So there's a couple points of ingress that you notice. Um, the first one being the small hole um, in the hold. Um, where it's run aground. The other one is the the gangplank, but it's kind of raised up. So you'd have to make quite a few lucky throws to try to even get it hooked on. So it's up to you guys uh, which way you want to proceed with it. Uh, Mac is definitely reluctant to go through the hole that's been punched in there because that seems really dangerous. Yeah, so his he would prefer to try, to try it with the grappling hooks, but he knows himself that he's not the best climber, so... If anyone, probably Matthew would get in and no one else. But he could let down the gangplank, maybe. Well, this is what we came here for, says Dennis. Let's let's do it, I guess. Hey Mac, at least you're at least you're not uh at least you're selling your boat and it's not crashed up like this poor sucker. And I kinda just clap Mac on the back really hard. Yeah, right. <laughs> let's keep um, it that way. Any of you can make an either an accounting or a praise roll if you'd like. Yeah, not even close for me. <laughs> nope. All right, so none of you really have any idea, but something like this has got to be worth a lot of money, even if you could just uh, claim salvage rights on it and hire someone else to take it. But in order to do that, you do need to put down uh, the, the various documentation and at least uh, do a cursory sweep of it. Well, I'm not very well versed in maritime law, but I guess we at least have to sweep it then. Yeah, definitely. <sighs> What a pain. But, you know, maybe I'll get to Cave Delilah after all. All right. So what are you guys deciding to do to go about this? Yeah, Throw so, out the dinghy. Exactly. All right. So uh, probably with mostly uh, Matthew's um, work, uh, you managed to uh, unsecure the dinghy and get her lowered into the um, water um, off the stern of the Delilah. Who's all going? And is there anything special you want to take with you? Yeah, definitely Mac is going because this is his idea. He insists on everyone wearing uh, like safety vests uh, in the dinghy and he takes all the, the ropes and like a one of these oiled hemp sacks or whatever that are water resistant so he can put stuff in that if he finds anything. Don't worry, guys. I got this uh, flare gun here. I'll bring it in case anything happens. Yeah, we can warn the captain if anything happens. That sounds like a good idea, says Captain Greenberg. All right, so the three of you get all geared up and uh, shove off. Um, Ashley's there to kind of like uh, watch you guys uh, go off into the boat. Ashley says, well, make sure you just guys uh, come back. I'd hate to be, you know, alone here with just, you know. Uh, I can stay behind if it's necessary. Well, if... If there, if there needs to be any babysitting done, says uh, Dennis, I could stay behind and make sure that that's done. Uh, of course. Let's get going then. All right. So you pile into the dinghy and make your way to the... Did you want to go for the gangplank or the hole? Gangplank is definitely my plan, and I'm introducing it to Matthew like, all right, so you're the most athletic of us. I have this, this hook and rope here, and we're going to throw it over there you're gonna climb up and you're gonna release that gangplank so we can all board the ship 
Absolutely. Nice. You got this, man. Hey, Mac, you really trust that guy alone with Ashley? Dennis. Yeah. I mean, I know I know he's your friend. It's just something about him. He works in security. He's just, you know how these people are. Like, I've met people who work in security. They have. Hey, well, look, he's your friend. I'm not trying to, but I don't know. I just get a weird vibe from him. So do I. Honestly, no idea why you even invited him. He has helped me out a lot, actually. Cool. Well, hopefully she's smart enough to stay with Greenberg and Kumar then. Look, he's just a quiet dude and he has a stern face. It's his job. He's literally getting paid for that. All right. So you make your way on with the boat to the area underneath the game playing. And it looks like you're up, Matthew, the only person who has actual skill points and throw. Yeah, I do pretty well at that, actually. Yeah, so that that is an impale. So really, literally the first time, the first throw you get, um, you kind of wind it up um, in your hand a few times and then let the uh, grappling hook go when it hits the zenith of the arc. It loops over the bottom rung of the game plate and hooks on, like, first time. Everyone, you're pretty impressed um, that he did it so easily. Yeah, I'm applauding him and uh, clasping him. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I start, like, boorishly cheering, just, yeah! Did you guys see that? From the boat, you start hearing cheering, too, as uh, some of the NPCs make their spot-hidden rolls. By the way, can, can I uh, retcon a little bit? I would have liked to bring a camera. Yeah, you probably have um, cameras. You have probably a dive camera, too, and you also have your phones. Yeah, and I want to take, like, a, a quick picture of him being fired up about making that throw. Yeah, get a good picture of it. Um, just point and click. You give a, a quick um, tug on it, and it's a bit frozen um, and takes a few ti- few tries. But after putting a bit more weight on the rope, you hear like a clank, and then you kind of hear something like metallic settle in position, and it becomes easier to pull. And you can actually pull the gangplank down um, on it. It appears like a like a little uh, pulley roller that it's on, and it starts sliding down. And that's our way in, folks. Oh, hello again, folks. I'd like to tell you about the Facebook group we run called White Wolf and Onyx Path RPGs Gameplay and Media. Have you ever wished you could have an easy way to find gameplay videos and podcasts or just media in general that deals with your favorite White Wolf role-playing games? Or have you ever wished you could find a forum to share gameplay that you have recorded? One that won't be drowned out by random posts and discussions, so that your media could get the attention you deserve. The group is specifically run with the sole intent of being a one-stop shop for people to view or share media involving the games we all love. We take thorough steps to ensure the page does not become cluttered and is easy to traverse. The group is already immense and continuing to rapidly grow, with new media being shared every day. Stop on by. We hope to see you there.